Good evening, my friends. This is the Grim Flayer. I hope you're doing very well tonight. Okay, we can do it. Just one more spoiler video. Just one more, and then I get to rest my weary voice. Until tomorrow, when I have even more to do, they just never end until I make two ends. But guess what? Nobody's happier than me. This set is wild and crazy. And you know what? Very few cards from it so far are as wild and crazy as Cauldra Complete, the card that we're talking about here today. And I think people are overlooking it or underrating it a little bit. Or maybe they're actually rating it accurately, and they're just looking at it from a different perspective for different purposes. For my purposes, in which I envision this card really thriving, I think it will be very good. I think it is dead. I think it's good enough to see play in Dead Guy Ale, in Orzhov Midrange, specifically in the type of shell that I am kind of, you know, starting to form in my mind over the last few days anyway. So thanks for watching. Let's talk about this living weapon, the Cauldra Complete really bothers me that I cannot find a higher res image at the time of this recording than this one. Sorry about the fuzziness, but what does this do? So Cauldra Complete is a 7-drop. Bob's beware. Cut your dark confidants right now if you're planning to play this card. You just can't risk it. Cauldra Complete, a 7-drop legendary artifact equipment. It is a living weapon. That means when it enters the battlefield, you create an, and attach a 0-0 germ token to this card. Okay, so far so good. We know through Batter Skull just how powerful Living Weapon can be. The next line of text, Indestructible. Okay, we'll take that. No Pillage, no Abrade, no Assassin's Trophy to take care of this artifact, no Ancient Grudge, none of the above. Thank you very much. It does have the equip cost of 7. We're jumping down to the last line there. And granted, 7 to cast... 7-2 equip, that pushes this well beyond the realm of playability. Now, Batter Skull, which we've mentioned already as a comparison, is 5 to cast and 5 to equip. That's still very high, but it is at least within the realm of possibility in the mid-game of a grindy game. This is purely late game only, very grindy games only, to consider hard casting this and subsequently equipping it if the germ token is dealt with. So let's get that out of the way. But what does it do? Right? We know it's a living weapon, we know it's indestructible, we know it's really hard to hard cast and equip. What does it do? Well, equipped creature gets plus five, plus five, and has first strike, trample, indestructible, haste. And whenever this creature deals combat damage to a creature, exile that creature. So obviously, my friends, we're talking about Stoneforge Mystic as the shell, as if that wasn't obvious already. Maybe I've already said it. Who knows? Not me. Um, so we're, of course, planning to cheat this in. And that is not only getting you disproportionate power, if you can cheat this in relative to the five drop of Batter Skull or the three drops of the Swords or Mall of the Skyclaves or whatever else it's going to be, you actually get a faster clock than with any of them as a standalone because this is is a living weapon like batter skull but it is bigger instead of a 4-4 germ you're attacking with a 5-5 and crucially this has haste this means that this is the single best clock you can put together with in uncontested stoneforge mystic and nothing else and believe you me dead guy ale decks need that clock we really do need that clock and um Cauldra Complete provides it. As if that wasn't enough, we have all kinds of evasive abilities and interesting keywords. Of course, you are first striking creatures, so it's very hard to multi-block in combat successfully or block whatsoever in any kind of profitable way, especially because upon resolution of that first strike damage, those creatures will be exiled. So you need gigantically... Um, you need creatures with gigantic butts to even consider contending with Cauldra Complete. And then we've got Trample as well. So if the opponent is just throwing a lot of medium to small things under the bus, a bunch of them are getting exiled, the rest of them are getting trampled over. It's total carnage. And then if the army is big enough to slow down the Complete to stop it from getting through, well, it's indestructible, and it just comes again next turn, right? Just coming back for more. So Cauldra Complete, absolutely insane. This is just like overpowered, as I say, carnage machine. The entire strategy from the opponent will not be to do any of the things that I just mentioned, but to simply try to kill Stoneforge Mystic before it is able to cheat this card into play. And granted, that is that makes Cauldra Complete 
Higher ceiling, perhaps, especially in the form of clocking, but lower floor than any of the playable alternatives, simply because it will be stranded in hand forever, or for so long as to functionally be forever, in many, many games, if they can deal with that Stoneforge. Okay, you say, I agree, then why are we playing it? Why are we playing such a high-risk, high-reward card in our Stoneforge Mystic mid-range deck? Aren't we all about interacting and eking out incremental advantage? Well, yes, for a large part, and no in some very specific ways. That actually, answering that question, leads me to the first answer for the card itself. No, it will not junk. I think if you're playing Abs and Stoneblade, you should probably not play Cauldra Complete in your deck unless you're um, unless even I am underrating the card and it proves to be just like one of the best in class options no matter who you are. But my thinking here is the whole point of playing Absin is to get a better clock with cards like Tarmogoyf and to get more efficient, flexible, one-for-one, X-for-one, sometimes removal spells like your Decays, Trophies, and Pulses, right? That is why you're splashing green into an otherwise straight black-white shell. So, when you are adding the native inherent strong clock of Tarmogoyf and you're, in a, um, you're adding more interaction, Cauldra completes, high ceiling is less necessary, and the low floor is more potentially disastrous for your incremental advantage plan. But Dead Guy Ill does not have any Tarmogoyf equivalent. It does not have any kind of a good clock if you really need to put the gas on and erase the opponent, and that is why Complete is much more appetizing in Dead Guy Ill in general. And then, my friends, if we talk about some of the other cards we've seen in MH2, what are we looking at? We're looking at Grief as a four of in the shell that I'm envisioning, as a card that can really deplete the opponent, totally cripple them before they even get a turn. In many cases, the early flurry of discard completely insane. You can see my Grief Blade list, my Grief Guy Ale video for more on this if you don't get it. We also have Solitude, which is just very, very similar to Grief in terms of how it plays in the shell. It's not as proactive. This would probably be more like a two of maybe, but it is something that can just totally Swords to Plowshares, the opponent's entire board. Both of these, of course, functioning optimally in conjunction with Ephemerate. So with the Ephemerate plan and the Evoke Elemental Incarnation plan front and center, we are not playing an incremental advantage game. We are doing something very different. And we also are more all in on Stoneforge Mystic than even I first realized with these Ephemerates, because Stoneforge Mystic is a decent Ephemerate target, but if we are relying on her to win the game a lot of the time, we're going to want the fourth copy to see her a lot. And now that we have Cauldra Complete, which is a hasty 5-5 keyword soup living weapon, now we actually can clock the opponent before they can recover from the extreme depletion of grief and solitude. And as if that wasn't enough, I think just for value purposes and flexibility purposes, playing this Ephemerate plan makes us want not only four Stoneforge Mystic, but also four pieces of equipment if we can find a room for them. Therefore, Cauldra Complete is not even displacing Batter Skull, which you need to stabilize you against aggressive decks. It's not even displacing your favorite swords necessarily, right? It's probably competing with something else altogether. What that is is to be determined, but maybe we can cut a traditional removal spell or a discard spell or two in order to accommodate the fourth SFM and the fourth weapon because grief and solitude are so powerful. That's the idea, my friends, so I hope you can see how in this shell particularly, in Dead Guy Ale, in Grief Blade, whatever you want to call it, this particular shell that I'm brewing up here, Cauldra Complete absolutely is dead, absolutely can be a very powerful component of how we get over the line. All right, so those are my thoughts, guys. Agree, disagree? That's all good. Leave it in the comments below. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate all of your wonderful support, your thoughts, everything else. Thanks again for tuning in, and I will see you for more wild and crazy Modern Horizons 2 spoilers in the very near future. Talk to you then.